bed. Let them talk if they want to. And welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. And we have a great show for you. I, I'm going to learn some about New York City, New York State history, as something you didn't know. Maybe you didn't know that New York State harbors several independent nations within its borders, which in, uh, I'm told even have their own passports. Yes, we do. Absolutely. So, Tanya Ganella. Frischner has joined us and she's with the American Indian Law Alliance and she's working with an organization called Two Row Wampum and we're going to discuss this event that's happening this Saturday which is a culmination of a canoe ride from the uh, Adirondacks area basically? No, actually from around Troy, New York. Troy, New mm -hmm. York, okay and um, we're going to talk about that canoe trip and what the Turo Wampum is and why it's important and why you should know about it. And uh, maybe uh, we'll learn something about the history of our United States Constitution and Declaration of Independence and where these ideas came from. A lot of people don't know that uh, many of the ideas that are enshrined in our rights as Americans came from Native Americans. Absolutely. So we're going to find out more about that. So Tanya, Tanya, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Yes. Appreciate it. Really do uh, ha uh, enjoy having you uh, discussing this subject. And you know, we've had, uh, we've, we've dealt with the Western Native nations, you know, but we really haven't talked too much on the show about the Eastern. And so, uh, you're of the Onondaga yes, nation, I right? Am. Yes, I am. And uh, the Onondaga is one of the six nations yes. that make up the Iroquois Confederacy. Yes. And who live basically in upstate New York and in Canada. Uh, that's right. Our territory go. It was much la larger than our territory some mm -hmm. decades ago, um, but now it um, is upstate New York, goes into Canada. Okay. And so what, we, what I want to talk to you about, uh, Tanya, is the event that's happening this Saturday. Because I think pe people in the city should know about it. You can go to it and tell us when it's happening. I, uh, we, you may have seen these beautiful leaflets around uh, the Two Row Wampum Festival here in New York City, and it's on uh, Saturday, right, August tenth, from yes. noon to five p.m. Tell us where this is going to be held. What? Well, it's going to be held at the Brookfield Center, mm -hmm. which is in Battery Park City, right, right on the water, right on Hudson River. Right. And um, oh, very easy the to glass, find. Uh, yeah, that big glass. Yeah, uh, but it will be outside, okay. Paul. And uh, will be easy enough to find. You kind of uh, turn around and look uh, and see the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. And we're just opposite that on right. the Hudson River. Sure, sure. So, yeah, you can get down there by taking the R or the N or the go to Fulton oh, Street. Yes. Any of those. So the they're trade. listed here on the leaflet as well. Do you have a website? Uh, go to? We we do. Yeah. Um, they can go to the Two Row Wampum uh, mm -hmm. Campaign uh, dot org. Two Row Wampum Campaign dot org. Yes, I believe right. it's down here. Yeah, what I see here is honor, honor oh, that. Honor. I'm gonna. I'm sorry. I'm gonna <laughs> honor t h e t w o r o w dot org. Yes, that's it. Okay, good. That's it. Honor the two row dot. Oh, I see. There, I see. It took honor me for a second to figure row. all those letters. Yes, oh right. Oh my God, I would have failed right there. <laughs> oh no. Honor the two row dot org. Spelled out. Honor the two row dot org. And yes. uh, also on Twitter at honor the two row. Yes. Excellent. And um, all right, great. Now here's you know the. Uh, the American Indian Community House, American Indian Law Alliance, mm -hmm. Onondaga Nation, People of the Hills. Is that what Onondaga means? Yes, it does. People in our hills. language, it means uh, the people of the hills. Cool. All right. And uh, Master of Ceremonies will be comedian Charlie Hill. Yes, a terrific, terrific man. Very entertaining. Right. A uh, well-known actor mm -hmm. and comedian. Sure. So we're thrilled to have him. Very lucky. Yes. And you'll have the welcome you of the canoes from the 13-day journey down yes. the Hudson River, which you'll tell us a little bit more about. Sure. The Haudenosaunee, not bad, huh? Yeah, very good. I did. Very eh? good. The Haudenosaunee That's singers and dancers led by Sherry Hopper, the mm -hmm. Aquasasne woman singers, mm -hmm. hoop dancer Josephine Tarrant. I've seen the hoop dance. That's cute. Yeah. Really nice. Silver yeah, Cloud singers. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Here's someone I might not be as good. Uh, ta Tad Odaho, Sid Tad Odaho, yes. Right. He's uh, our spiritual and political leader of oh. the Iroquois Confederacy. Oh, interesting. And yes. Chief Oren Lyons, yes. of course. He's been around forever. Yes. Know, great guy. Chief Jake Edwards and, and uh, Tanya 
Ganella, Frischner, and others. Yes. So welcome. And it'll be at the Brookfield Place Waterfront Plaza, 220 mm -hmm. Vesey Street, New York, New York, between West Street and the Hudson River. Yes. And you can take the ACJZ 234 or 5 to Fulton Street, or go to Chambers Street, or go to City Hall, and just walk over just a little bit west of the World Trade Center across yes. across the West Street. So great. All right. So we have a short sort of introductory one minute uh, I found on the internet introductory oh, nice. uh, trailer. So we're going to go to the trailer. It's about a minute long, and then we'll come back. I'm going to talk a little bit about the background of what exactly the uh, the two row wampum festival and campaign is all about. So let's go to the to that tape right now. Yes, cool. it was. And it it's is. this last, it was obviously a year ago, the next summer is this summer, right? Yes. And so 13 days of paddling down the Hudson River from Troy, New York. Yes. Well, actually, it started um, in Onondaga Territory okay. near Syracuse. Mm -hmm. I started there. Um, on, and on the Mohawk River, I imagine, mm -hmm. right? Yes, down the Mohawk River. And now the paddlers are south of Beacon, New York. Mm -hmm. I was there on Saturday for the uh, arrival of the paddlers, and it was a big festival. Mm -hmm. um, Pete Seeger was there giving, him s giving his support because he lives in Beacon, New York. So it was a quite uh, terrific day. Mm -hmm. It was a great day. Great. How many, how many people are involved in the paddle? Close to 200 wow. paddlers. Um, all at one, can you see all 200? Yes, canoes that that, that's that's what we saw. Wow, yes, that's exciting. So canoes and kayaks and small mm. boats. Sure. Uh, going Anything that floats it's small. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, right. And going down the Hudson River uh, parallel. Okay. Oh, parallel. And now that's the idea of two row wampum because yes. uh, let's 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 break it down for folks because sure. not everybody knows these things. Here, this is a photograph of wampum, and it's exactly. obviously two rows. So what is wampum? first, as well, people should know, but they probably don't. Right. Wampum um, are belts, and they actually contain the written history of our people, of the Haudenosaunee. Um, the two rows, and, there, and I should explain that the two row uh, wampum and all of our wampum belts are made out of quag shells, so the belts are purple and white. Mm -hmm. What and kind of shells are those? Quag shells. What's a quag? Just tell quag us. shell is something you're going to find um, around Long Island, where the Shinnecock people are. You're going to find them in New England. It's like a, a large clam, and the inside of the clam is purple and white. And so they would, the natives would make beads out of yes, these. Yes, yes. And then string the beads together in belts. Exactly. And were they money? Is that what they were supposed to no, be? No, no. They were ne never money. They okay. were to signify a specific event in history and also to signify treaties and agreements made between the Haudenosaunee and uh, the European nations. Okay. And so when the Europeans, how was first contact established between the Iroquois Confederacy, the Six Nations, and the Europeans? Well, the contact was um, very simple. The uh, new arrivals, the Europeans, um, came to our territory and what they found was a people with a government established with leadership and with free speech, equality for the people, um, and the support of women. 
uh, this is what they found in place. So right from the start, um, our, the Europeans had to treat with our people on a nation-to-nation -nation level. So the relationship was very diplomatic. And you see that in the Turo Wampum Belt. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. the Turo Wampum was to, uh, and this is the 400th anniversary yes. of the Turo Wampum Treaty. Yes. And what was that treaty? 400 years ago, that's uh, 1613. 1613? Yes. My word. That's a long, that's before New York. City. Well, actually, and, and you're right, because the wampum was made between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Dutch, mm -hmm. who were coming up the Hudson River to our territory, sure. and we knew and we realized that they weren't leaving anytime soon. And the Dutch were, as you know, um, businessmen. Mm -hmm. They wanted to conduct commerce with the Iroquois Confederacy. So in order to do that, we sat and uh, worked that agreement out mm -hmm. so that the agreement is one of commerce, but it's also based on uh, peace, equity, and friendship mm -hmm. between our respective nations. So the two row, is this the uh, photograph of the actual document? It's pretty close. Um, we have the actual document at the Anadoga Nation. Right. And mm -hmm. I think I, th I saw that on one of the YouTube that was taken out and shown. Yes. Like it's long, it's yes. very long, and it's got actually different sort of figures on them, like people holding hands, it seems. Um, that would be another okay. a wampum belt, All yes. right. signifying something else. Oh, okay. yeah. interesting. So each yeah. one signifies something oh, different. Oh, absolutely. But the key yes. one that we're talking about is the Turo Wampum Treaty. What did that treaty guarantee? That treaty guarantees as you can see from the two lines on the wampum belt, they're parallel lines. And the agreement was that the Haudenosaunee would travel down the L river of life next to and parallel with the Europeans in their boats. And those boats would contain the laws and traditions and policies of those respective nations. So it's a treaty about non-discrimination mm -hmm. and not being involved in the business of another nation. Okay, so... A sovereignty. Sovereignty. So mm -hmm. now what's interesting is today this is enshrined in the United States Constitution, my understanding. Yes, it is. Tell us about that. In the Article 6, right? Is that it? When I get it right? Well, there's, um, yeah, I think that you're referring to um, treaties being the supreme law of the land. Yeah. And according to the U.S. Constitution, that is the law. So the treaties that we are talking about are historical. Mm -hmm. um, they're very old, but they're still good law. Mm -hmm. And we have always respected those treaties sure. and um, acted in that vein. So they uh, actually, because the treaties existed before the uh, United States government existed, yes. Yes. the six nations of the Confederacy are technically and actually independent countries. Yes, absolutely. Their territory is the same as Canada or Mexico mm -hmm. or any other country. Yes, exactly. There's and there's uh, sovereign territories. Right. Yes. Now we know that there's there's not it, the, this is the, the two rows have crossed at times. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right? they have. They <laughs> they have crashed and crashed right. into crashed each together other. Crashed together at yes. different times, and, and uh, um, we know during the uh, during the American Revolution, of course, uh, crimes were taken or committed against the Mohawk people. Mm -hmm. You know, because they chose, maybe they chose the losing side in the war, mm -hmm. which is actually never a good reason. Right. I mean, today is August 6th, 68 years since Hiroshima, and I don't think you should punish That's people right. for what their leaders decide to do in the heat of battle. But uh, Well, there, there's a slight correction on that, Paul, if, if I yes. may. During may. the re Revolutionary <laughs> War, the Haudenosaunee as a confederacy um, made a decision to stay neutral. Our leaders saw the, um, the revolution as a fight between brothers. And we felt that we should stay neutral and stay out of it. But also as a confederacy of six nations, um, each nation can make their own independent decision. Mm -hmm. So some of uh, the confederacy nations chose to either side with Britain or fight with Britain or f mm -hmm. stay with the uh, revolutionaries. I see. So there was a collective punishment, basically, of people on both sides. <laughs> I, well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. And uh, so um, 
However, despite as often happens in these situations, uh, the United States is sort of you know has many examples of this. Despite at one hand fighting, mm -hmm. the other hand was was taking uh, some of your philosophies and ideas of the oh, Six yes. Nations and, and putting them right into that constitutional document that came out of the Revolution. Yeah. And t tell us a little bit about that, about the, the, the story of how the Six Nations came to be unified around this idea of peace between them. Well, w at, at the time, and, and we'd say over 1,500 years ago, that that's about the age of the Confederacy coming together. And 1,500 years. Yes. That's seven times longer than the United States. Exactly. So it's, it's quite a few generations ago. Yeah. And um, which is which is part of um, our our philosophy and our way of life is that our leaders, when they're deliberating in um, in council, mm -hmm. they must keep the seventh generation in mind when they are making decisions. Mm -hmm. But the nations that were quarreling and warring against each other decided to come together in peace. Mm -hmm. And from that emerged a constitution that we refer to as the Great Law of Peace. And the Great Law of Peace has been studied by historians and anthropologists. And the analogy between mm -hmm. the Great Law of Peace and the U.S. Constitution can't yeah. be disputed. Okay. Uh, it, they're very, very similar. Well, and weren't so, so several of the founding fathers yeah. actually studied the law of peace and brought it to Philadelphia to discuss it as a, as a, as, and it was introduced and many of the ideas Yes, it was. The, the founding fathers knew that it would behoove them to be, uh, have a friendship with the Iroquois Confederacy mm -hmm. because um, our Confederacy was strong and powerful and the last thing they needed was to have the Confederacy as their enemy. So the very first thing that George Washington did was make a treaty mm. with the Iroquois Confederacy. We're going to talk about how we're honoring that treaty today. Okay. We have a call right now. You're on the air. Hi. With, you're on the air with Tanya Gonella Frischner of the American Indian Law Alliance and yes, uh, I can't hear you. Turn your Turn your TV down and speak up. Okay, yeah. I can't hear you. Please turn it up. Hello, can you yes, hear me? I can hear you yes. now. Yes, I wanted to know how with fracking, if they are fracking now, or if Governor Cuomo does decide to let uh, corporations do the fracking upstate, how will it affect the Indian nations, uh, the Six Nations? Thank you. All right, thank you for that question. Excellent question. Yes. Fracking. Fracking, yes. yes and, and I think the uh, gentleman that called in said something about how is fracking going to influence and mm -hmm. what's, what will be the effects of fracking sure. on our territories. Yes. Well, we've, the fracking movement, anti-fracking movement, has come together with the Haudenosaunee and all our neighbors, and it's not just indigenous peoples that will be affected. It is everyone. Mm -hmm. It is everyone. Sure. Um, the the fracking that um, has Blowing been... Blowing up and putting chemicals into the ground yeah, in order yeah. to force out the natural gas, which has been done in every state, other states, and has led to poisoning of the water. Flaming, I've seen it all, the, yeah, YouTube, they're true, the YouTube videos of the flaming uh, Minor sinks. Minor earthquakes. Uh, all yes, kinds of things. So yes. it's disastrous. They it tried is. to do it with nuclear bombs in the 1950s. Yeah. Well, well, here we have uh, solutions that are in substances that are going into the ground um, to for the fracking process, but nobody knows what those chemicals are because the chemicals, uh, the formula is patented. And I believe it's Halliburton that owns that patent. Okay, Halliburton, the same company that uh, uh, Jeremy Scahill, a good, more good friend, we were discussing democracy now in, yeah. in WBAI. Jeremy Scahill, who has done a lot of writing about Halliburton and, and yes. the other companies that are tied into this sort of, mil you know, 100% war all the time culture that yeah. we've been developing in America, unfortunately. Yeah, so nobody knows what the compounds are of that solution. Right, so it's going into the water, who knows, mm -hmm. later down the line what yes. will happen. Um, okay, t uh, thank you for that. Now, well, let's, the, because the whole idea of, tr it, it, it seems to me, though, the 400 years, uh, the, the idea of this, this 
two rows sailing down the Hudson River and yes. in boats and canoes is to honor this idea of the immigrant people and the First Nations people who are here mm -hmm. uh, having a bond of peace despite yes. all the winds that buffet us over the centuries that fundamentally right now is we're trying to work out a peaceful uh, a pe living together peacefully. Well, that, that's it. That we are all in this together. Yeah. Um, it, it, uh, it has been proven. I mean, climate change is here. Environmental degradation is here. Um, you can ignore it or you can do something about it. Mm -hmm. And part of the message of the Two Row Wamu campaign is about us living together mm -hmm. um, in a healthy world. Sure. And, and doing something about the desecration of Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us a little bit how this came about. How did the idea uh, come about of, of this uh, Two Row Wampum uh, Well, it had campaign? been in the making for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, our leaders and uh, different people were talking about it. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the neighbors of the Onondaga Nation, an organization in Syracuse, New York, it had been around for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. And their mission is to support the treaties and the sovereignty of mm -hmm. the Iroquois Confederacy, specifically the Onondaga Nation, which is the mm -hmm. capital of the Haudenosaunee. Sure. And their idea was to re reenact the Two-Row Wampum, to reenact the Dutch and the Haudenosaunee going down the river of life, the Gaswenta, that's mm -hmm. what it means, sure. and that's what it says, together, fairly, but being in this world together mm -hmm. and doing it peacefully. Okay, very interesting. Tell us again, uh, Saturday, the Saturday yes. is the festival. Saturday, August 10th, sure. and it's from 11 to 5. Um, but the the program, and we have a very solid program, mm -hmm. Paul, uh, begins at 12. Okay. So there will be vendors and music and native sure. dancing. And this is going to be a very family-oriented day. Mm -hmm. So bring your children because sure. there will be things for them to do. All right, and great. participate in. This is a great thing because yeah. you can bring your kids and they can learn a lot Absolutely. about American history and about the First Nations that uh, has, are so influential to our society and to our way of life. And uh, to learn about uh, these things is, is, is priceless. And to have fun doing it, too, because yes. I'm sure there will be a lot of activities with the young yes. ones. And, uh, um, Tell us, you know, the uh, uh, the Six Nations tend to be a very matrilineal society, right? Yes. I mean, women run the show, right? <laughs> In the Longhouse, the women make the decisions. Well, ultimately. the Longhouse is, is our place for our ceremonies and mm -hmm. for government and council to meet. Um, but our women, from the very beginning of our Constitution, the great law of peace, mm -hmm. um, there is a suffrage for women. Sure. Um, participation in government and we So we have it for leaders. 90 years and you have it for 800 or 1500? Probably longer. <laughs> yes, yes. There you go. Right, right. right. We oh well. share those ideas with the uh, suffragettes as well. Mm -hmm. In upstate New York? In upstate New, in New York. Seneca yeah, you can go to Seneca, New, New York and uh, see the Women's Museum mm -hmm. there. Okay, where, where the great, uh, where the women's movement started in America. Exactly. Right nearby. So, uh, again, here we are, the immigrant population learning and taking from the native population. A um, couple more minutes. Uh, I guess, that, you know, the, uh, the, the state politics, I mean, it is an election year, I guess, not for governor, but, uh, you know, whoever's governor of New York uh, impacts on native on relations. Yes, it does. With, with, yes, with it does. At this level, and we've had things like, uh, you know, Gambling, cigarettes, mm -hmm. all these kind of things. What, what mm -hmm. do you think about all that? Uh, you know, is is the government has the right to tax cigarettes and tax gasoline and do all those things, or do you feel that it's a well? Sovereign? I I think if um, Americans go back to their constitution, mm -hmm. where it's very clear that the U.S. Constitution states Indian not Indians not taxed. Mm -hmm. That is the language in the constitution, and to bring it to contemporary times, it's still the law. Mm -hmm. and it's still what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. If w our relationship is on a nation-to-nation -nation basis, then the relationship of the Haudenosaunee is with and always has been with the federal government. Mm -hmm. 
that is according to U.S. law and right. our laws as well. And not the state. The state government is way down the line. Yes. They have to get in line yes. with everybody else. Yes. <laughs> I would agree with you there. <laughs> right, actually. So, right. And, um, well, that's, uh, that's interesting. So, uh, as a, so, therefore, as independent nations, as nations which have a pre-revolutionary uh, relationship right. with the colonial governments, yes, they have to be taken seriously as independent absolutely. Countries. And now we have a declaration on the rights of indigenous peoples. Mm -hmm. It's a human rights instrument adopted by the UN General Assembly in 2007. And you're doing work with the UN right now as well. Yes, yeah. yes, and um, and I help work on the drafting of that declaration oh on really? the rights of indigenous peoples. What is that? What is that declaration? So I know we were just just a few weeks ago. The UN was having a big shindig about all this, right? Well, no, it's actually coming up oh, this it's Friday, coming up. August ninth. Yes, wow. is the International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples. Wow, so it's coming so up. So when the paddlers come in, the idea is for folks to walk to the United Nations oh. and to participate in the meetings that are going on, mm -hmm. and. The exciting part is that governments are sending their representatives mm -hmm. to meet with our leaders who are coming on and coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, the Netherlands, Norway, Finland, Denmark, to name a few. Mm -hmm. So this will be a recognition mm -hmm. of what happened 400 years ago. Very interesting. Do, uh, does the, do the Six Nations still uh, generate their own passport? Yes, we do. We do. We right. have a passport that says Haudenosaunee passport mm -hmm. on the front, and it is based on um, mm -hmm. the standard of other passports mm -hmm. throughout and, the and world. And folks have actually gotten uh, political asylum in, in territory, right? Uh, I think at, at certain points, different <laughs> different native leaders at different times have, yes. have lived briefly, briefly in political asylum in, yes, a, in another exactly, country. Exactly. I'm thinking of Edward Snowden and <laughs> <laughs> Fanny Manning. Oh, no. Not a little mm -hmm. too big. No, no. Yeah. The, the thing that um, needs to be clear is political asylum mm -hmm. has to be agreed upon by all the people. There I has see. to be consensus. Mm -hmm. And it has to be um, related to indigenous people. Peoples. Right. Um, our territory is not a haven for people who have violated the law. Okay. And and it never is has been has and never right. will. Uh, have there people who thought that and you've had to instruct them and what the reality is? Well, I think if you follow what we yeah. call the white roots of peace yes. that come to the Onondaga Nation and you are willing to live under our law and mm -hmm. to protect our law and our people, then we, we will consider your request. Very interesting. But it's a very long due process sure, that our be. people go through. Yes. Very good. Very interesting. Okay, we have half a minute. Thank you very much, Tanya Ganella Frischner, for joining us uh, to talk about the Two Row Wampum Campaign. And I hope everybody uh, who's within listening distance comes down Saturday and uh, and checks it out over Battery Park City, uh, right next to uh, the Ground Zero, right next to the World Trade Center. Exactly. Okay. Thank you very much for joining. Oh, my us. pleasure. Thank right, you. We'll see you next week. <laughs>